Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about VTP, the VLAN trunking protocol. It allows you to add, edit, or delete VLANs on switches, which are configured as VTP servers, and then other switches, which are configured as VTP clients, will synchronize their VLAN database with the servers. So say you go onto a VTP server, there's no configuration on any of your switches yet, and on the server you create VLAN eng and VLAN sales. That configuration will be pushed to the VTP client switches. So it saves you having to create all your VLANs on all of your different switches. And if later on you don't need the sales VLAN anymore, you can delete it on a VTP server and it will be automatically deleted on all of the clients. Clients. Or if maybe it was VLAN number 10 before and you change it to VLAN number 100, that information would also be synchronized across all of your switches. So it can be convenient if you manage a large campus with a lot of switches there. You're still going to need to perform the port level VLAN configuration though. The switches can't somehow magically know which physical port needs to be in the edge or the sales VLAN, so you'll still need to go and do your port level access port or trunk port configuration but it saves you having to configure the VLAN database on all of your different switches. Now be very careful if you do use VTP because it doesn't just allow you to add VLANs, you can delete and edit VLANs as well. So if you accidentally introduce a switch with a higher VLAN database revision number, and it doesn't have all of your production VLANs on there, like say you're currently using VLAN engine, VLAN sales, and then you go and get an old switch out of the cupboard, which doesn't have VLAN engine and VLAN sales on there. And this switch happens to be a VTP server, which is the default, and it's got a higher revision number, and it doesn't have the VLANs on there. Well, when you plug it into your campus, it will update the other switches, they will delete the eng and the sales VLANs, and you've just dropped all of your PCs off of the network. That would be a very bad day at the office. That would be a career limiting mistake to make. So do be careful if you are using VTP. If you use both DTP and VTP, we covered DTP in the last lecture, the VTP domain name has to match on neighbor switches for trunks to be formed by DTP. It's not recommended to use DTP anyway, you should be manually configuring your trunk parts. The different VTP modes that you've got are VTP server, VTP client, and VTP transparent. On a switch which is configured as a VTP server, you can add, edit, or delete VLANs. A VTP server will synchronize its VLAN database from another server with a higher revision number. So you don't have to just have one master server there. You can have multiple servers for redundancy, but only one of them is going to be the actual copy of the VLAN database. Whichever one has got the highest revision number will act as the master. Next type was a VTP client. On a VTP client, you cannot add, edit, or delete VLANs. It can only get the information from a server. A VTP client will synchronize its VLAN database from the server with the highest revision number. And finally, we've got VTP transparent. A switch configured as VTP transparent does not participate in the VTP domain. It does not advertise or learn VLAN information, but it will pass it on. So if you've got a VTP server and a VTP client, and there's a VTP transparent switch in the middle, it will pass on the server information downstream to the client. On your VTP transparent switch, you can add, edit, or delete VLANs, which is in its own local VLAN database. So it doesn't participate in the domain, it's just independent on its own. 
Now, while we're talking about that, let's look at how VTP coexistence works with your different modes of switches, because this is something that confused me when I was first learning about VTP. So in our example here, we've got the VTP server up at the top, and the other switches downstream from there are VTP clients, apart from the VTP transparent switch. So on the VTP server, for our example network here, we need the engineering and the sales VLAN. So we configure the engineering and the sales VLAN on the VTP server. The client switches will synchronize their database, so they will learn about that VLAN and they will add it to their database. The VTP client down in the bottom right will also learn the information as well because the VTP transparent switch will pass it on to it. But the VTP transparent switch will not update its VLAN database. It will not add the Eng and the sales VLANs just because that was configured on the server. So on the VTP transparent switch, you need to add the VLANs there as well. So on the VTP server, you manually add the Eng and sales VLANs. And on VTP transparent, because it's still in the campus, it still has PCs and the sales and engineering VLANs, it needs to know about them, you add the VLANs there as well. The VTP configuration, you need to specify the VTP domain. So here we've said VTP domain flat box. And then to set the mode, it's either VTP mode server or VTP mode client or VTP mode transparent. And the default mode is VTP server. To add your VLANs, you know this information already. For example, VLAN 20 name sales. So our configuration in this last example, on the VTP clients, we would say VTP domain flat box and then VTP mode client. On the VTP server, we would say VTP domain flat box and VTP mode server. On transparent, we would say VTP mode transparent. Then on the server, we would configure VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. And on the transparent switch, we would also configure VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 there. Then all of the switches would know about all of the different VLANs. We would just need to configure them down at the port level, put the actual client PCs in the correct access port. Okay, that is the whole thing for VTP, apart from verification. To verify it, show VTP status. That will show you what the domain name is, also what the mode is, whether it's a client server or transparent, and also the current revision number. Okay, so that's the theory for VTP. In the next lecture, we'll configure it in the lab. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.